In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to retrieve Wi-Fi passwords using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. I ran this demonstration in a controlled environment using my own Wi-Fi networks, including a hotspot I set up with my brother's name, Fawad. But before we get started, let me tell you, this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I do not promote or encourage any illegal activities including phishing or hacking. Any techniques or methods discussed are intended to be used responsibly and ethically. Always respect others' privacy and obtain proper permission before accessing any networks or devices. Remember, unauthorized access to Wi-Fi networks or personal information is against the law and can have serious consequences. Please use the information in this video wisely. A few days ago, I used a web portal to change the SSID and password on my ESP32 wirelessly. I not only saved the router's Wi-Fi credentials in the EEP ROM, but I also managed to access those Wi-Fi credentials from the EEP ROM. Right at this moment, an exciting idea came to my mind. I realized that someone could potentially retrieve the Wi-Fi password of a nearby Wi-Fi router or mobile hotspot. So I decided to test this in a controlled environment to demonstrate how such a security vulnerability works and to show you how to protect yourself from it. Remember, this is an educational demonstration meant to raise awareness about Wi-Fi security. So without any further delay, let's get started. First, let me explain how this works. When you go to manage Wi-Fi connections, you see a list of available networks. The topmost network, Engineer Fahad, is the SSID of my Wi-Fi router that I'm currently connected to. Two other networks, Fawad and Sher Alam, are visible but not connected. Both networks show a log icon indicating they require a password. Fawad is the SSID of my brother's mobile hotspot and Sher Alam is the SSID of my neighbor's Wi-Fi router. For this demonstration, I created another Wi-Fi network with the same SSID as my brother's hotspot Fawad. This can trick someone into clicking on the wrong network and entering their credentials, showing how attackers might exploit such vulnerabilities. Let me stress again, never use this on someone's network without their permission. It's illegal and unethical. Anyway, I'm going to explain how attackers make a fake Wi-Fi network using ESP8266. Well, they can also use ESP32 or Raspberry Pi Pico. There are so many Wi-Fi supported controller boards out there. But let's focus on how they create a fake Wi-Fi network. You should know about this. I'm using NodeMCO ESP8266 after a few months and I'm not sure if the ESP8266 is still available in the boards list. You can see ESP8266 is not available in the boards list. I've used it a lot, but for the last few months, I have been using ESP32 for all my IoT-based projects. Anyway, to install ESP8266 in the Arduino IDE, go to my website electronicclinic.com. Scroll down and type ESP8266 Board Manager in the search box and then click on the search button. Open this article, Note MCU ESP8266 Arduino IDE Board Manager URL Link Installation and First Project. In this article, I have explained pretty much everything. So if you're just getting started with the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, then you should read this article. Anyway, you need to copy this URL link. Again, go to the Arduino IDE, go to the File menu, and then to Preferences. In the Additional Boards Manager URLs, paste that link, and then click on the OK button. Now, go to the Tools menu, then Board, and click on the Boards Manager. In the search box, type ESP8266. Install ESP8266 by ESP8266 Community. It's going to take several minutes depending on the speed of your internet connection. As you can see, the ESP8266 package has been successfully installed and you can clearly see all the boards included in this package. Now, let's go ahead and confirm if the ESP8266 boards are available in the boards list. So, let's go to the tools menu and then to board. You can see the ESP8266 boards have been successfully installed. I'm going to connect my Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module to the laptop and then I can go ahead and upload this program. I actually downloaded this code from GitHub. I have slightly modified some code to make it work with my setup. 
This is my brother's Wi-Fi hotspot name which I have set as the SSID for the network I created. I could leave it empty or write something else. I'm not worried about this because I can change the SSID wirelessly at any time without hard coding. The VIP portal will display a message asking him to update his router firmware. Something that looks natural but is actually part of the trick. Let me show you how this works in practice. The Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module is already connected to the laptop. So to upload the program, I'm going to select the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Next, I'm going to select the correct communication port. Finally, I can click on the upload button. The code has been successfully uploaded and now I'm going to check if my created Wi-Fi network is available in the list. Now, you can see two networks with the same name Fawad in the list. One is the actual network and the other one is the fake network I created. Let me connect to this network to show you how the web portal actually looks on a laptop. You can see the SSID and the update message. This looks so real. Here is how it looks on a cell phone. When someone connects to the fake network and enters the password, it's saved in the ESP8266 EEP ROM. You might wonder how I will know if my brother has entered the password. When the password is entered, the onboard LT will blink five times to notify me. I could also add a buzzer, however, to make it more user-friendly, I have added an I2C supported SAT 1306 OLED display module to show the password directly on the screen. You can follow this circuit diagram. On the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, D1 is the SCL and D2 is the SDA. I also modified the code. I added these two libraries for the OLED display module. Let me show you how to install these libraries in the Arduino IDE. Copy the library name. Go to the sketch menu, then to include library and click on the manage libraries. Paste the library name in the search box. You can see I have already installed this library. Next, search for the SSD1306 library. I have also installed this library. To display the SSID and password on the OLED display module, I added a few lines of code in the loop function. Now, there is no need to place this board in front of me and I don't need to keep checking the web portal either. If he enters the password, it will be displayed on the OLED display module. I've been waiting for several hours for my brother to enter the password, but he didn't fall for it since he knew this trick. For the sake of demonstration, I eventually asked him to connect to this Wi-Fi network so you all could see how it actually works. Finally, my brother connected to the fake network and entered his password. The password appeared on the OLED display and I successfully completed the test. Now, to check the password on the web portal, in the code there is an IP address. If you go to this IP address and add slash pass, you can check the password. You can also clear the entered password. It not only clears the password from the web portal but also from the EAP ROM. If you want to change the SSID, you can simply type slash SSID and enter a new SSID name. Now you can go to the manage Wi-Fi connections list and it will be there. You can do the same thing wirelessly on your phone as well. I ran this demonstration in a controlled environment using my own Wi-Fi networks, including a hotspot I set up with my brother's name Fawad. I made up the story to illustrate how attackers could steal your Wi-Fi credentials if you are not careful. Always ensure that the network you connect to is the correct one. If you see a duplicate SSID, do not enter your Wi-Fi credentials. This technique should only be used for entering Wi-Fi credentials wirelessly on the ESP8266 or ESP32 for legitimate purposes such as IoT setups. Never use it to exploit someone else's network. I hope this video helps you understand how attackers can exploit Wi-Fi networks and how to protect yourself. Remember, the goal is to educate and raise awareness not to cause harm. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked this episode, like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.